Hi, welcome to episode 5 of Data Every Day. Today we'll be looking at a data set of diamonds and be using them to using it to analyze diamonds by their cut, color, clarity, price, and other attributes. So let's go ahead and make a new notebook and load um, actually let's just take a look at the data. We can see um, we have a number of categorical uh, columns, but the one that I'm really interested in is here, price. We're going to try to use the other um, the other columns, other features, to predict the price of the diamond. And you can see, I think it said 54,000 training examples, so that's that should be a good amount. And we can use linear regression to approximate the val the price of a diamond. All right, so let's get into it. I'll start by importing all the usual libraries. And let's see, what do we need today? I have them written here. All right, we're going to be using um The, the label encoder from sklearn. So the label encoder will be able to take the categorical uh, columns like clarity. You see that uh, the way it's, it's listed is not with numbers but with uh, S, S, SI2, SI1. It's a depiction of how how clear the inside of the diamond is. The color as well is given by a letter. Uh, ranked from D to J. And the cut is given as, you can see, ideal, very good, good, etc. So what we're going to do with the label encoder is take all those text labels and turn them into numerical labels so that our learning algorithm can understand them. So we'll also need, uh, as usual, a uh, min-max scaler. so that we can scale our features down, make it easier for our learning algorithm. And we will get that classic delicious function, train test split. Then our models, we're just going to use linear regression, uh, but we'll use, we'll try it with regularization and without regularization. So, linear regression without it, and then I'll just copy this, and we'll have ridge regression, or L2 regression, and lasso regression. Okay, so now we will read in our data, so over here, get this, this file path, data equals pandas.readcsv, and the file path. So we take a look at that. All right, here we go. Here, let me move this over. So we can see, uh, just like I said before, we have some categorical variables uh, which we want to turn into numerical. So we'll use the label encoder for that. Additionally, we have an extra index column. Uh, I didn't want to uh, use it as the index column because it starts from one and it just makes things a little confusing. So let's just go ahead and drop that guy. So data dot drop. Uh, it's unnamed, so I, I'll just do data dot columns. The first guy uh, and axis one in place. True. Okay. Uh, right. So now that guy should be gone. He is. And now we'll extract the price as our y. So y equals data price and x equals data data dot drop price access one. All right, if we just take a look at that, y should be a vector of all our prices, and x will be our data set without the price column. Cool. So now, let's see, what are we doing? All right, let's take a look at these guys. First, we want to know how many um. How many categories we're dealing with? 
So let's go ahead and print out the number of unique elements in each of the categorical columns. So we'll do print and we'll use an F string. Cuts uh, the length of uh, that column, cut, dot unique. And so this this should give us, oh wait, what happened? Oh, I didn't put the closing guy. All right. Five cuts. So there's five unique entries in the uh, cut column. So we'll do go ahead and do the same thing with the other two. So we have colors. And we have clarity. All right, so we have five cuts, seven colors, and eight clarities. So, oh, I should make that just for <laughs> consistency. All right, so what we're going to do next is set up our label encoder. So let's go ahead and call it encoder. Genius name. <laughs> label encoder. And we're going to fit it to each of the columns that we need. So we can actually use fit transform, which will combine the fit and transform functions, but that will allow us to just go in and set the columns with their uh, numerical values right away. So data, okay, we're going to do cuts first. So cut is now going to be equal to encoder dot fit transform. Uh, is this correct? Yes. Right. Okay. So it's going to take our our current um our current column. It's going to see how many there are. It's going to assign a, a unique identity to each. Well, really, what's going to do is it's going to it's going to order them into a dictionary and then use the dictionary keys as the new values. So I can we can see that if we here we'll, we'll make a, um, a variable called cut mappings so that we can see um, this will be a dictionary in uh, index to label uh, for index and label in enumerate uh, right so if, if we look it up um, label encoder has a attribute called classes underscore and this will be this will have all the labels in the proper order <clears throat> so encoder dot classes underscore if we take a look at that, you can see that here it is. The encoder is basically assigned a number to each of the different labels. So 0 for fair, 1 for good, 2 for ideal, 3 for premium, 4 for very good. And so that sounds good to me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the other uh, guys. So color 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 and clarity clarity <laughs> it's my cat clarity all right so now let's see let's see okay let's take a look at them Whoops. Huh. All right. Uh it's it's printing them strangely. Wait, what happened here? What happened to our cuts? Oh, we must have done something wrong. Ret 
we're fitting it to the cut. That's strange. Oh, it's because we ran it twice on the cut column. Right. We can't run this twice. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just make X again. <laughs> My cat is meowing so much. Alright. So, uh, we made new X. Now we'll just do it again. Oh! No, no, no. I made a mistake, see? It shouldn't be data. I should just make all of these X. Because we don't need to use data anymore. Uh, <laughs> X. Okay. Alright. Now we do it once and we check it out. There we go. You can see color mappings will have its own. Each letter has now as a number. And clarity mappings also. Each is assigned a number. So now if we take a look at our data, at our X, all those guys have been turned into numbers. So that's that will be allow us to feed it into the learning algorithm. So also we want to scale the features down. So we we'll use a min-max scaler. Scaler equals min-max scaler. And x is going to be scalar.fittransformx. Okay. Now if we want to just take a, a look at what that looks like. I'm going to turn it into a data frame. And you can see everything has been scaled down between 0 and 1. So now we're ready to train our model. <clears throat> or models, I should say. So x train, x test, y train, y test, equals train test split, x, y, and a train size of 80%. Okay. That will shuffle the, co the uh, rows as well. And now we can define our models. So we have the standard model will be linear regression. <clears throat> and our uh, L1 model will be lasso regression. With We'll set the regularization parameter to 1. Uh, I don't think we're, we'll be experimenting with it so much, but Ideally, we would test out a bunch of values to see if, what gives the best results. Uh, and our L2 model with ridge regression also will initialize to 1. Okay. So now we'll fit them. Standard model dot fit. X train. Y train. We'll do the same thing with the L1 model. L2 model. All right. So now let's check out the scores. Then we'll be done. So print. I'll use a, another F string here. Uh, without regression, uh, regularization. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so. It would be standard model dot score x test y test and then we'll do the same thing for the other ones. So this one so with uh, ridge uh, we'll do lasso l1 regularization. Ridge L2 regularization. We'll do L1 and L2. Alright, and there are our accuracies. We can notice it looks like ridge regularization is performing the best with uh, 88.3602. So, you know what? Why not? We, we have a little more time. Let's. um. Let's see. Let's experiment with some different regularization parameters to try to find one that works the best. So we'll take our L2 model, uh, L2 model, 
will be now it, we're going to change the alpha. We'll try 0 0.1. And we're going to use this for reference, right? So, uh, all right. And then we'll fit it. Oh, sorry. Trains. Okay. Now if we get this guy again. Here, we'll just put that here. Okay. Looks like our accuracy went down, actually. See, from 6 to 4. So why don't we try in the opposite direction? 2. And our accuracy also went down by even more. So 1 seems to give the best accuracy. Uh, what about 1.5? 1.5 gives not as good. 0 0.9. Uh, and that actually gets better. 0 0.8. Wait, what was 0 0.9 again? Yeah, 8 is better, so 7. 7 is better too. 6. Even better. 5. Wait, I thought we tried this already. Oh, we didn't. 4. No, it went down. So 0 0.5 is the ideal alpha for our ridge regression. So you know, this is such a small increase in improvement. It uh, looks like the, the um, regularization didn't really add too much to it. But, uh, and ideally we would, we would plot this, you know, um, try out a bunch of different parameters for, I mean values for the uh, regularization parameter, and then plot it uh, with the, in respect to the, um, the score or the loss. All right, so uh, I think that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed the content, be sure to uh, subscribe and leave any comments in the section below because I really would appreciate any feedback uh, if you have for me. So thanks a lot. Goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow.